This episode of Hands on Windows is presented free. If you'd like the rest of the episodes filled with great Windows tips and tricks, join Club Twit for $7 a month, or you can get just this podcast for $2.99 a month. Head on over to twit.tv slash club twit for more information. Coming up next on Hands on Windows, we're going to finally take a look at Windows setup and what has changed in Windows 11 version 22H2. Some of it may surprise you. This is Twit. Hey everybody, I'm Paul Throt and welcome back to Hands on Windows. Today, we're going to take a look at Windows setup, a process that honestly hasn't changed too, too much since the Windows NT days, if you can believe that. But the Windows setup application that users or IT administrators use to install Windows for the first time, whether it's a clean install, an upgrade from an earlier version of Windows, whether it's Windows 10 or Windows 11, or if you just get a new PC and you turn it on for the first time, honestly, hasn't changed in a major way since Windows Vista, and I don't think has changed almost at all since Windows 10, until you get into the out-of-box experience, which we'll talk about in a bit here. But there, there are two basic steps to Windows setup, two things you need to know about it. The first is the first boot experience. This is the old-fashioned style of Windows setup. This is where you choose the version of Windows you're going to install and where you want to put it on the disk and that kind of thing. This is something you will only see if you install Windows in a clean install scenario. So you've downloaded the ISO from Microsoft, you created some kind of a setup media, and you've installed it onto a new computer or an existing computer where you're just going to blow it away and start from scratch. The second phase is called the out-of-box experience, so the UBI, and that's the part everyone's familiar with. It's graphical, it's nice looking. That has been made much more attractive in Windows 11. It's only changed a little bit, like I said. Uh, but we're going to step through both of these uh, quickly. Um, I, there's not a lot of change in the first part, especially. So if we go to the screens, this is again, is the first bit of this Windows setup is what you're going to see on a clean install. Uh, most people are not going to see this, but power users, of course, will see this. You're going to select your you know, language, time, currency, all that kind of stuff. There's nothing really dramatic going on here, but you're just going to, it's going to go full screen, uh, activate Windows. If you have a product key, my recommendation, by the way, is to never do this here. You can do this later. And in fact, that's going to be a theme uh, throughout this episode. There's a lot of things in uh, setup that you just don't have to do up front and frankly shouldn't. And we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more. Um, if you created this uh, ISO with Microsoft, you'll have a choice of editions. It's important here to choose the right edition. If you have a Windows Pro key, for example, you're not going to be able to activate Windows Home or vice versa. You know, the N editions are for Europe, etc. But for the most part, you're probably going to be dealing with Home or Pro, not the N versions. And so you should know that going in, uh, which you're going to use. You have to go through the EULA. Actually, you don't have to go through it. You can just accept it. I don't know anyone who reads that. You're going to be doing a custom install, of course, not an upgrade. You'll select the disk or the partition where you're going to install it. And then you go through this really, actually, very fast process here where it just goes through a few different steps. Uh, basically blasts what Windows need onto the disk and then restarts. And... This is where things get interesting and also different in Windows 11. So this bright screen that comes up is your first indication that things have changed. Just visual changes, frankly. This is that kind of pastel colored uh, theme that you see in Windows 11 as well. So they're kind of pushing this out to Windows setup as well. And if you're familiar with Windows 10, you will see that basically with a few minor exceptions, the series of steps are the same. So you're going to choose a country or region, the keyboard steps, it will check for updates. And then the first new thing, and this is new to Windows 11 version 22H2, is they're letting you name your PC again for the first time since, I actually don't remember. It might have been Windows 8 or Windows 7 back when you could do this. The reason you don't want to do this now necessarily, it's your choice obviously, but is if you do enter a new, a new name, your own name for the computer, it's going to reboot again. And then it will re run setup. You won't have to do everything you did before it will come right back to this part, but you do have to restart the computer. So this is one of those things you might want to hold off for later as well, but it is new again to the latest version of Windows 11. And then we get into the, the ugly bits, unfortunately. So one of the big changes in version 22H2 is that Microsoft is requiring users to sign in with a Microsoft account uh, if this is for personal use. In Windows 11 version 21H2, they were only requiring this for Windows 11 Home. For Windows 11 uh, version 22H2, they're also requiring it for Pro. 
Now, in a future episode, I'm going to talk about how you can get around this. But for now, we're just going to assume that you're going to use a Microsoft account. Uh, frankly, most people will be using a Microsoft account. It's not really that big of a deal. But later, we'll, we'll look at how you might be able to get around this. So you do go through your two-step authentication. I hope you're using that. And uh, then you're given the option to either restore from a previous computer or set up as a new device. I always set up as a new device, frankly. But uh, if you have, if you're restoring a previous computer and do want to get that thing back to where it was before, you could use that option. Um, you will be prompted to uh, set up a PIN. This is non-negotiable. <laughs> you need a PIN now. This is the most basic form of Windows Hello authentication. Uh, this is a four or a, a more digit, uh, uh, you know, character uh, PIN. Um, you have to do this. And what you won't see here in the screen is that if you have some form of Windows Hello fingerprint or facial recognition, you will be prompted at this point to do that as well, to do one or the other. This is another thing, frankly, I think you should wait on until you've gotten into Windows. It, it just speeds up the process not to do this now. But actually, in this case, especially with uh, facial recognition, I found that this doesn't always work for some reason during setup. So it's kind of best just to wait until that bit is done. Then you'll go through the privacy settings here again. This is these are not granular privacy settings. Um, for now, I leave these all on. I wouldn't really look at this too hard because you can go back and assess these settings and then do so in a more granular fashion as well once you've um, installed Windows. So you get through that. This is a, a bit of crazy nonsense that Microsoft actually added to more recent versions of Windows 10 as well. So you can customize your experience in very minimal ways. So. Basically, if you choose entertainment, ga gaming, school, there are other choices here. It will change the icons that you see on the taskbar de by default. I always just skip this. I've, I've found no value to this whatsoever. For example, if you're a gamer, it's not like it optimizes the PC for gaming in some way. It's, it's really, for now at least, kind of a superfluous um, extra step in there. Another step you should skip is if you have an Android phone and you want to use it uh, with Windows, Please do so. Don't do it now. <laughs> Just wait until you get into uh, Windows for the first time. This will be one of those things you can do later as well. And this is the final big change. And this is another um, ugly change, unfortunately. It's actually kind of hard to track how this has changed over time. But back in Windows 10, Microsoft with Windows 10 Home at some point stopped giving you the option to not back up your desktop documents and pictures folders to OneDrive. With Windows 10 Pro, they allowed you to choose whether or not you wanted to back up those folders. And they even give you the option to choose which of those folders you could back up during setup. Flash forward to Windows 11. In Windows 11 Home, again, same thing. Didn't give you a choice. You're backing up. You have no choice. Windows 11 Pro, you could turn off the backup, but you couldn't choose which folders, right? So it was either on or off. So you had that choice. And now we're at version 22H2, and this option is going away. And so basically you will seeing a screen here that just says, hey, we're backing up these folders. There's nothing you can do about that now. But once you get into Windows 11, after you've set it up, you can disable that if you like, or configure which folders you'd like to be backed up. If you have Microsoft 365, uh, family or personal, uh, you'll be told that is, you don't really need to know that here. But if you don't have it, you'll be given the option to get a 30-day 30, uh, 30 trial. Microsoft likes advertising even in setup. And they're also advertising Game Pass now, which is their um, video game service uh, for PC, console, and uh, both. But in this case, this would be the PC version, obviously. Let me check for updates again. This screen, These series of screens will be familiar to you if you've ever set up Windows 10. And it does take a few minutes. And then you're, you're done at the desktop for the first time. And that's basically it. That's the process from, you know, empty computer with a USB key. You've installed Windows and you're at the desktop. In future episodes, what I'm going to look at is ways you can get by some of those annoyances that I mentioned in this episode. And I'm also going to look at the steps you should take once you arrive at this desktop, because there's all kinds of configuration, application installs, and so forth to do. And I've got a rundown of that that we'll be looking at in a couple of weeks. So that wraps up this episode of Hands on Windows. Thank you for watching. You can always find new episodes at twit.tv slash H O W, and remember that we drop new episodes every Thursday ad free on Club Twit and on iTunes. Thank you for watching.